Yes, it is time, my friends, for another TK panel quick tip. Have you heard of a Photoshop technique called frequency separation? It mostly gets used in fashion and portrait photography, but it has great potential for cleaning up landscape images. So hang out and I'll show you how it works. The basic concept of frequency separation is that it separates the image into two separate components or frequencies, a texture component and a color component. So sometimes in an image, you want the texture to stay the same, but you want to change the colors in a part of an image. Or in other situations, you want the colors to stay the same, but you want to change the textures. Well, this technique allows you to do that. And it's used a lot in fashion photography to create those super plasticky, smooth skinned uh, supermodel images that we see out there. But what kind of applications in landscape photography does it have? Well, let's go over to the computer and I'll show you. Frequency separation can be done without the TK panel. So if you're interested in finding out how to do it by hand, I would say look it up on YouTube. I'm sure there are a lot of videos on YouTube showing how to do manual frequency separation setup. But since this is a TK quick tip, I'm going to show you how to do it using the frequency separation action that's in the TK panel. Before I show you, I'll just point out that this is somewhat of a last resort option for me. When I need to do cleanup, I always try out some of the other Photoshop tools for doing that cleanup first, such as the spot healing brush tool, the clone stamp tool, the patch tool, or the content aware fill feature. All of these features are simpler than using frequency separation and they often work and do an excellent job. But if I'm not having luck with all of those, then sometimes moving over to frequency separation can solve a problem that I can't solve any other way. I always advocate capturing the best quality image file from the beginning that you can so that you don't have to do this kind of cleanup. But if you have an image file that is otherwise excellent and you just need to clean up some things to make it a usable image, then this sort of thing can be a lifesaver. One of those situations is lens flare. Now I try to avoid having lens flare and a lot of times like in this image, when I get that much lens flare, I just scrap the image. It's not worth it for me. But if you have some lens flare in an image that is otherwise perfect, then this might be helpful. And the reason why it works for lens flare is because lens flare is a mostly a color and brightness issue and the texture behind the flare is still okay. The problem is when we try to clean it up using, for example, let's say the spot healing brush tool, a lot of times what happens is, is that the sampling isn't quite perfect. So Photoshop doesn't know exactly where to sample or it doesn't have enough options of where to sample from. And so even though it gets rid of the flare, it doesn't leave behind something that looks natural. And you can also have these same sort of challenges with the clone stamp tool and the patch tool and content aware fill as well. So this is a situation where I might turn to frequency separation. So go ahead and delete that extra layer I made and we'll come down to the TK menu and go up to the frequency separation action and run it. And when you run the frequency separation action, it stops and asks you how much blur you want to put on the color frequency layer. When it's a situation that mostly involves color as lens flare does, I leave the blur at the default radius of 10 pixels and just click OK and let the action continue running. When it's done, you'll have two layers inside a frequency separation folder and before you do anything, you'll notice that those layers uh, without any action on your part aren't changing the image. So at this point, the image is unchanged and it's now up to you to decide what to do with those layers to make the change. To work with color, you just want to select the color slash blur layer and then grab the clone stamp tool and make sure that it's set to sample just the current layer. And I usually start with the opacity at 100%, although in some cases it's helpful to clone at a lower opacity, but we'll see if we need that or not. 
Now you just use the clone stamp tool as it's meant to be used. You hold down the Alt or the Option key to choose where to sample from, and you want to sample from a place that has the correct color. So I want these colors out here in this part of the hill that doesn't have the flare to be in here where the flare is. So I'll start sampling from out here somewhere and then I'll size my brush and I've got a soft edge brush and now I can start just painting in that area and the color is being placed in that area where the flare was. Now, like I said, I think it's going a little too much and also I went over into this light area and introduced some light color into the shadows where I don't want them. So I'm gonna back that off. I'm gonna bring the opacity down to maybe 60 or 70% so it doesn't become too dark and I'm going to sample a little smaller area and try to just keep it out of the light areas. And I can come over on this side of the flare as well and work with that. What you can see is happening there is that I'm changing the colors, but I'm not changing the texture that's behind those colors. And up here into this area and down here. So all of the texture of the grass and the hillside behind the flare is not being changed. Already, that's making a good difference. Now, when you've taken out the color from the flare or changed the color of the flare and you still have things left over, that means that there's a texture component to that flare. So now we want to move over to the texture layer. And here we do want to sample at 100% on the clone stamp tool some texture from somewhere else. And that usually almost entirely takes care of the issue. And you can keep working with that. And then if there's still a little bit of color left over, we can jump back over to the color layer and clone in some more color from somewhere else. You can see that that's really doing a much better job of removing that flare than the other methods we tried. Now it is a little time consuming, so I'm not gonna bore you with showing the whole process, but I'm gonna turn off this frequency separation action that I ran and turn this one on that I worked on for quite a while, and so you can see the results. And it's not perfect because the flare in this image is really bad, and I don't think this image is good enough that I would really want to salvage it, but if I did feel like I needed to salvage it, that's the best results that I was able to get, better than anything else I could find. Okay, let's jump over to another example. This is an example, sand dunes in Death Valley, and unless you're there right after a windstorm, you're probably gonna have footprints going through your sand dunes. So this is another one of those situations where if I try other tools like the spot healing brush tool to remove those, it doesn't look natural. And if I use the clone stamp tool to try to remove those, then I might get a better texture match, but now I'm not getting a brightness match. I'm not finding places I can sample from that are gonna leave the right brightness. Pretty much no matter what I do there, Content Aware Fill works a little better. I've tried on this, but still not perfect. Let me go ahead and delete that layer. And let's try frequency separation. Now, this is not a color issue. This is a texture issue. So this time when I run the frequency separation action, I'm not gonna leave it at the default 10 pixel radius. I'm gonna zoom in a ways on some of those footprints. Oops, come back here. And I'm gonna turn up the radius until those footprints just kind of blur away like that and smooth out and then click OK and let the action run. And so now, instead of a color issue, I'm dealing with a texture issue, so I'll go to the texture layer. And again, I've got the clone stamp tool set to current layer and 100% opacity. And now I'm gonna pick some texture out here that I think is the right texture for where these footprints are. Sample from there and now begin painting. And I can resample all I want. I'm moving that texture in there. And what you'll see is, is that while it's adding the texture that I want and getting rid of the footprints, it is maintaining the original colors and tones and gradations of that sand. So we get a fix or a repair that looks much more natural 
than any of the other cleanup tools in Photoshop were able to accomplish. And again, I could keep working along with all of these footprints and I did. I'm not gonna show you all of that to save time, but let me show you what I was able to accomplish. Again, preferably I wouldn't have any footprints in my photo, but if this was a once in a lifetime shot and there were some footprints that were messing it up and this works in sand or snow or dirt or mud, uh, this is a pretty handy way to clean it up. Okay, one more example that I want to show you. This is kind of a contrived example because I actually wouldn't want to change the thing I want to change about this image because I like it, but it's a good example and might have applications in other situations. And that is this number two here. Let's say for some reason in this image, I don't want number two to be there. So I could try to come in with the spot healing brush tool and size it and just take out the number two. But then because there's not a lot of pink around it, it's not sampling the pink color, but I really like the pink. I just don't want the number two in there. So that's not a good option. If I come over to the clone stamp tool and try to sample, I can sample from the pink area. But the problem is, is that there's not a lot of pink area. So I have to keep sampling in the same pink area over and over again to get the color. But what I get is repeating patterns in the texture. And in the end, I've got the pink all there, but I can see all these repeating patterns and that just doesn't really look natural to me. So I don't like that option either. So this is a good example of where frequency separation can be great because I can separate the color cleanup from the texture cleanup. So let's try it. So all I need to do is just run the frequency separation action and I'm going to leave this one at the default radius because it's mostly a color issue, a little bit of texture, but we'll just leave it at the default radius and I think that's going to work okay. So I'm going to start with dealing with the color. So I'll go to the color layer and get the clone stamp tool and now I can sample from that pink color over here and even though I'm continuing to sample from the same place over and over again, it's only the color that's coming across not the texture, so I'm not getting the repeating patterns. And eventually I can cover that whole area with the pink color that I want. And I'm doing a quick job for the video here, but you could be a little more careful with this until you get that. So you can still see the number two because there's a certain texture component to the number two there. So now I want to come over to the texture layer and I want to bring in some different texture. But because I don't have to stay in the pink zone, I can pick texture from anywhere. And so that way I can do a more random sampling of textures so that it looks more natural. So maybe I'll start over here and bring some of that texture in in this area. And then maybe I can come over here and grab some of this texture for up here and over here and slowly bring it in and try to do it in a way that looks much more natural. And again, if I wanna bring in some more of the pink color because I've still got some blues and other things in there, I can come back to the color layer and bring in more of the pink from certain areas to try to get that to be a little more uh, uniform. And in the end, what I end up with, again, is something that looks much better, much more natural than any of the other Photoshop options that were available. So there you go, another TK panel quick tip. This one on the frequency separation action. Like I said a couple times in the video, it isn't the first option that I go to when I'm doing image cleanup. I usually start with the healing and cloning or content aware fill options first. But when those aren't doing the job that I want, this is a great option to have. So I hope that was helpful. Thanks for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you again in the next one.